Greetings, welcome to Jeffrey Films. This 1999 movie was directed by John Badham, who we've reviewed a few of. Stick Out, Blue Thunder, Music by Hans Zimmer, starring Goldie Hawn, Mel Gibson. So let's review Bird on a Wire. Ex-drug enforcement agent. When I sent to jail, the other knows I can send them and they want me dead and they'll take whoever's with me, all right? Why? Why? Because I testified against them, that's why. About what? Well, it's a long story. It's beyond... This movie opens with the age of Aquarius, which is a brave choice, and Soroson, played by the late David Carradine, is just getting out of prison and getting picked up by Albert Dix, played by Bill Duke. Yeah, that Bill Duke. Soroson must have been in there for a while, because look at that outfit. Then to Detroit, where Dix and Soros show up in a Corvette at a kid's birthday party. And this pick has a semi-automatic for any kids that misbehave. They got a big deal, but there's one hitch. They have to take out Rick Jarman. Mel Gibson plays Rick Jarman, and he's pretending to be Billy Ray right now, as he's working in a mechanic shop for the last three months, and he plays a prank on his friend Marvin. Billy Ray, you going to sleep under there? Oh, 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 God, Marvin! And then Marianne shows up at this full service gas station where Billy Ray heads out and serves her and she recognizes him and he hurt but he continues to lie. He looks just like her ex-husband whose plane went down in Mexico 15 years ago but he tries to cover that up and she's like let me see your right arm because he had a tattoo there and it's clearly been removed but she buys it and leaves. Now I got some shrapnel there I took that in Vietnam. It's all down the right side you want to see it? I'm sorry. My friend would have never been in that war. Rick calls the FBI asking for his cover guy, but he's been retired and he's talking to Joe who's trying to find his location and he ends up deleting his file after saving it to a disc and he even lies to him and says that Sorsen is still in jail. Rick wants to be relocated and Joe's like, no, two days, two days will do it. Marvin offers Rick a partnership at his business and Rick's like, I'll think about it, knowing that he's probably leaving. And then Mary Ann's at a business meeting having flashbacks of her and Rick in the good times. And she decides to drive by that night at the gas station. And then shit goes down because Sorsons and Diggs show up and they start shooting everything. But why shotguns? Diggs didn't want to kill him before. After hitting this Corvette, he does now. It's a bit of a delay, but the gas station blows up and I don't think Marvin made it. They eventually escape and end up in a little hotel room and he's taking a shower and he was shot in the ass. Marianne is upset that he disappeared on her. They were to get married, but he points out that she got married four months after he disappeared, so. The police find Marvin's body dead and Rick calls the FBI, but his file is no longer there. And then room service comes by. Is Rick being paranoid or is he just being cautious? Chain off the door, okay? Just rattle it like you're gonna take it off. Make him think you're gonna take it off. This. You mean like this? Yeah. This is funny to you. <laughs> they miss the bad guys and run. And as they're crawling across the outside of the building, Rick's telling her that ex-law enforcement officers are chasing after them. Also, I think she wore the wrong outfit for this. Since when did you start wearing underpants? They go to a store to get some new clothes, and the police find Billy Ray's name next to Marvin's dead body. I mean, like, how? Did Sorison and Diggs run into the burning gas station to write Billy Ray's name next to Marvin's body to finger him? Like, that doesn't even make sense. It's gonna be harder for them to kill him now, because they'll also have to deal with the police. And the police actually spot the car, and people are fingering the car and stuff. They're like, oh, that's him, that's them. And then who's this? Is that Christopher Judge, who plays Teal on Stargate? Hell yeah it is! Or better yet, indeed. They speed up and we have a cop car chase, and it looks like gas down. Also, never try to lose the cops on a railroad, and if you do, make sure you, you look both ways. The bad guy is called Joe, who was in on the drug running crap back in the day, and they reminisce. Rick and Marianne take a ferry, and he tells them that Diggs and Sorison were corrupt FBI drug enforcement officers that used him and their mutual friend Jamie to pilot these drugs, and they got caught, and the cops came by, and there was a big gunfight, and Jamie got killed, and he was used to testify and went into witness protection after that, and he never called her because she got married. 
Rick has to get $2,000 off Marianne to pay off his old boss when he worked at a hair salon. He also has to apologize and cut his hair just so that he can get this little black book with useful information. A genius, the Michelangelo of hair. I'm not exaggerating. We lost half our clientele when he really? left. He left from his lunch break. Can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> Bad guys are tracking them. Also, Marianne's cards are being flagged. And they have to rob the bank, pretty much, but really, they're just taking out her own money. And then she decides to part ways with him and has to hide because the cops are also searching for her. Rick shows up on a bike and grabs her. And then there's another cop car chase, but on bikes this time. That ought to be enough to cover the damages. <laughs> what damages? Marianne's boyfriend visits the police and he's showing this bank robbery stuff. Also, it's interesting that she bought heels for all this running that they're doing. And then they visit another place, an animal hospital that Rick decided to build and work at. We meet Dr. Rachel Varney who works at this animal hospital and used to have a romantic relationship with Rich. She makes some moves on him and she's going to remove the shotgun pellet from his ass and Marianne assists, but then she gets really faint like, like, what are you fainting at? He picked me up and put me back on my feet, showed me how to do everything. I bet he did. You should see the barn, by the way. Yeah. Oh, it all worked. Every single idea you had worked. Rachel asks if he considered coming back because she's getting married on Sunday and would totally rethink it if he would. Marianne walks in and storms off seeing them standing together. And then they see a helicopter and it starts shooting at them. Rachel has a gun and started shooting at it, which buys him some time to get into this little plane and take it off. It's like a little crop duster. You thought Marianne was faint before. Well, she's going to be faint now. They end up taking out the rotor of the helicopter, but now they have no wheels to land on. And then they crash land, which they both come out pretty unscathed. Now they walk through a forest and they find a motel. And the water in the shower looked brown before she touched it. Also, cockroach. And they climb into bed that night and the hotel's pretty worn down and they talk about sex. They throw some witty banter back and forth, but then the sexual tension is just too much. I thought you didn't want to discuss it. I don't. Well then shut up. Shut up? Yeah, shut up. Yeah, I'll shut up. She's always had a dream of them just sailing away together and she calls her boyfriend and tells him to call the FBI and the media and get them to meet them somewhere. But of course he calls Joe, our corrupt FBI agent. They finally find Lou, his old caseworker, and he's old and seems to have some memory problems. And then Joe, Sorison, and Diggs all show up. Well, you two go down there and lock yourselves in and don't come out until everything's quiet, okay? Where are you going, Rick? Well, I don't know, Lou. How about the zoo? They got guns there, you know every inch of the way. They get to the zoo and he lights up everything, turns on all the lights. It's a nice zoo, it even has a legit alligator. He tells Marianne to stay inside the control box and he takes the trank gun. And when he shoots it at them, it's a bit too early and completely misses and ends up getting shot. And when Marianne has to push some buttons, she pushes the wrong ones. Hey. Marianne finds a gun, but is it loaded? Rick decides to release a bunch of animals, and he walks Diggs in with some lions, whose gun conveniently fails him. <laughs> some monkeys chase Marianne and knock her down, and then Rick battles Joe, who's auditioning for a role in Piranha. <laughs> Then Marianne has to avoid a tiger that's chasing her, so she climbs up straight into Sorison's arms. Sorison ends up battling Rick on a rope bridge, which is made for monkeys, and it's pretty cool because it starts breaking apart, and they both get electrocuted, but only Sorison falls off because Rick's foot gets stuck, and he's just hanging there, but he does fall to safety. Then we jump to a boat in the middle of the ocean where Rick and Marianne are making out. I guess everything got cleared up. No problems there. She had enough money. She could afford a boat. Must have broken up with a boyfriend. Yeah. Then we hear the bird on the wire song as the credits are going down instead of up. This movie's decent. I definitely remember it a bit more fondly, but the performances of Gibson and Goldie Hawn definitely carry it. And I like Bill Duke. I mean, yeah, that Bill Duke. You scared, motherfucker? Well, you should be. 
Because it's a green beret, it's going to kick your big ass. I ate green berets for breakfast. And right now, I'm very hungry. And David Carradine, but not much for their roles. Felt pretty wasted. I wish they would have spent a little more time with him and built them up as a threat. Gibson was a Mary Sue. Every job he had, he was amazing at, and everyone loved him till he left. And then even then, they still loved him. You got the classic action hero who continues on with a serious bullet wound, though nobody really sells it like Mel. I still remember Lethal Weapon 2 when he got stabbed in the leg and my leg was hurting watching him sell this. Frito, I could marry you. You liar, you would marry me. I could. I could. If you just put a little extra effort in. A little extra effort! <laughs> And I love me some Goldie Hawn, definitely one of my favorites being her in Overboard, but she's got some classics in the 80s and 90s. In the end, this had a budget of 20 million and made 138 million, so director John Badham knows what he's doing. This is a decent film, it has some good acting and a decent story, but it was really at the heart of it just a chase movie, so there is some things you can learn from that. There's just a little key component or two that is keeping this from being a great movie. Well, in the end, yeah, it's kind of worth checking out if you haven't seen it. As always, thanks for watching.